the replay go ahead and skip this countdown if you're watching the replay go ahead and skip this countdown elton what's up bradley from canada what's up all right whether my internet can hold up <laughs> all good we got like seven minutes yeah no and our mics are hot so everyone can hear our conversation so how have you been i'm speaking to you for a while well i think i've never met you actually yeah. i know uh, yeah no this is gonna be fun uh, I've, I've known of you for so long and then you know we haven't really actually just chatted you know Whereabouts are you based then? Um, out here in Oakland, California. Oh, okay. Obviously on that from movies and um, Raiders and that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oakland Raiders! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't, are you really a football fan? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. Big time. I have season tickets. They moved to Las Vegas. Uh, I got season tickets out to Las Vegas. So that's how much I know about American football. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, like, uh, right. I'm just trying to think, like, <laughs> let's see here. Don't be shy. Say hi. I see a bunch of you out there. Where's it being heard live? Yeah, we're, we're all live right now. We're live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We can put dial down to an art form either. For anyone watching on Facebook or Twitter, come on, hop on the YouTube stream to chat live with us. Or join the Discord. I'm trying to try something new here on the show. So join the Discord seo.video slash discord
Andrew, what's up? Carol from Seattle, what's up? See about 23 of you out there. Say hi. Don't be shy. from the super secret SEO chat on Skype. Say what's up. So you know how, you know how the show goes, right, Joe? I'm going to go over like a few updates in the beginning and then I'll introduce you in about 10 minutes in. Yeah, my problem. I've, yeah. Okay. Um, again, I've been watching you for a while. Then, so. <laughs> Greg from the Bay, what's up? forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Did you bring in your questions? I know Joe can answer a lot of them. <laughs> Hobby loves SEO. Hey, hey, 
Welcome to another episode of the SEO Video Show, where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera, aka Dre, and I carried SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest, and my guest this week is the founder of TopicalRelevance.com, Joe Priest. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Hobby, Elton, Bradley, Andrew, Carol, Greg. What's up, everyone? Now let's go ahead and pick this week's winner. So you know I got one more month pass for IMG and all you have to do is put I love SEO in the chat or in the description below to get entered. So let's go ahead and pick it. Come on, email me or if you're alive, let me know. Nubia. Luther, all right, that concludes this week's contest winners. Be sure to email me for your one month subscription to IMG. All right, let's get on with the show. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Why are SEOs good at game shows? They know how to get quick answers. Google improved data filtering and comparison of performance reports in Google Search Console. Be sure to check that out. Filters now support regular expressions and they revamped the comparison mode. May is just around the corner. So what do you think will be impacted the most with Core Web Vitals? Let's listen in to on Lily and Mike's conversation on the iPol Rank podcast. So I think it's gonna be really similar to quote unquote mobile getting when everyone like was like, oh, let me hurry up and switch to mobile mm -hmm. friendly. And then like the net impact wasn't that big. But I think what where we're really gonna see impact is gonna be in the publishing space, specifically around cumulative layout shift, because all of those sites do that thing where the ads pop up and it pushes things around and they're gonna get so much pushback from their ad sales team, mm. and just like the revenue part of the business that they're not gonna wanna make those changes around CLS. So I think those sites are gonna get crushed. Once that yeah, happens. that's a really great point. I think that's that's absolutely the one place that I think, the, or the one niche that I think people should be focused on Core Web Vitals to the extent that the SEO industry has kind of blown it out of proportion. Mm -hmm. For sites where you physically can't use the content because things keep moving around yes that's a problem that's and i'm glad that google's cracking down on it because it's a really bad experience for users as well but so many seos and so many sites right now are so obsessed with core web vitals almost to a point where it's like are you focusing on the content on your website because that's actually <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity there maybe something's not right there um so i think it depends on your niche. I think it depends on your competition. If your competition sites are loading much more quickly and have much better usability than yours, then it's definitely something to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yes, publisher sites should definitely focus on, on CLS. Are you using press releases in your SEO strategy? I've been using them since day one. It's an SEO's best friend. The Newswire team offers four tips to get more SEO traffic from your press release distribu distribution. Let's check it out. All right, the first tip that I have to share with you is to focus on keywords. When writing a press release with SEO in mind, you want to make sure that you are focusing on one SEO keyword per press release. And whenever you've identified that one keyword that's relevant to the topic and the message that you're trying to distribute in your press release, you will want to make sure that it is included in the headline, the first paragraph, and at least once or twice again throughout the press release. And I think that that segues perfectly into the second tip, which is including multimedia in your press release. Press releases have come a long way from being just text-based. Now, in order for your press release to really kind of gain some momentum with media outlets and the consumer, 
It really requires that level of multimedia in the press release. The third and perhaps the most important tip when writing a press release that's SEO friendly is you have to write something newsworthy. And this would be to add a press room or a newsroom to your website. Now the benefit of that is that you would be able to organize and house all of your press releases on your website, which is a piece of online real estate that you, the company, own. If you're an enterprise SEO and you're not working with your PR team, schedule a meeting with them on Monday and go get to know them. Should you index your product pages? This brings me to my tweet of the week by Alita Solis. It depends if the industry, if the inventory is uh, status, like if it's available or not. Alita shares a decision-making flowchart, which with the criteria she uses for e-commerce SEO. Alita also has a nice flowchart to how to learn SEO. I was hanging out with the, the Boost Rojas team this morning and they reminded me that the version seven just came out on this week on learningseo.io. It's a must see for those trying to learn SEO, so check it out. Should SEOs use the Google Disavow tool to clean up background profiles? Let's listen in. And um, they, they, it is possible to change your rankings by disavowing the right link links do not just disavow all links anyone who tells you to disavow all blogspot links because their blogspot is a fucking idiot and should be hit upside the head with a stick or a two by four or possibly a brick yes but what so are the myths around disavow files are a disavow file in and of itself is not going to fix anything you have to try to if you've got a manual penalty you have to try to remove them disavow won't work just because you're not ranking well a disavow wait, 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 file... so, so, so down, so down, so down, so down. <laughs> you need what what she's saying is removing physically the link yes. is much more effective than oh god yeah than just filling out the disavow file Exactly. I've been seeing some fantastic results on my clients' rankings by using the disavow tool and keeping my uh, our backlink profiles clean as possible. What is the keyword golden ratio? Uh, Doug Cunningham tells us the meaning on Chase's channel this past week. The keyword golden ratio is a data-driven way to find keywords that are underserved on the internet. You could think of it as the supply and demand of keywords. Basically, it forces you to find long tail keywords, which is sort of the holy grail, especially for new sites that are trying to get traction. Maybe they're still in the Google sandbox. So the definition is the all in title value, the number of results in the all in title, which is an advanced Google search string divided by the local monthly search volume, which we'll just sort of typically assume it'll be your local country in my area of affiliate marketing, often people focus for the US or just by default because the market is quite big, but it could be whatever your market is, right? So all entitled results divided by the local monthly searches where the only, where the local monthly searches are 250 or below. So it forces you to find very low competition keywords. There you have it. If you want to learn a little more about long tail keywords, the link is in the description. Daniela and Neil remind us how building relationships can help your SEO efforts. Work with other spa owners. So you have to remember, you know, a lot of people only serve certain cities. I know you're going online, but you can still work with other spa owners, close knit network. And what I mean by that is if you have content and you know, other spa owners have content. And what I mean is like, if you provide many massages and facials and someone else mainly provides hair and uh, nail polish stuff, uh, manicures, pedicures, you don't really compete, but your clients could be their clients and their clients could be your clients and you guys can promote each other's stuff. And that's a great way to grow your business over time. Um, in the web-based world, we just look at that kind of stuff as partnerships or business development and it works really well for the web as well. Yeah, we are big in collaboration, not competition. Collaboration, not competition, my SEO pros. If you don't offer, offer a service, refer someone in your network, and I'm sure they'll return the favor. What has changed in SEO copywriting since 2010? Jarno Von Drill on the CaliCube explains. 
it's not all that different than we did used to do in SEO 10 years ago when mm -hmm. we were doing keyword optimization. The big difference nowadays you know, when you do naming optimization and which information do I put in my titles and my H1s is that you don't just look at the keyword search volume any longer. Hmm. You'll also make, make damn sure that the keywords you're using are actually attached to the entity you want to illuminate on that page. And what you often see is that people take overlapping terms, stuff them into one single page because they all carry a lot of keyword search volume. But when you really delve into those keywords, you often discover that those keywords resemble different entities. This is a perfect segue to my guest today, who is all about schema, entities, and topical relevance. Please ask questions throughout our conversation, and I will give away some SEO shirts to the best questions asked. All right, let's get this started here. All right. Joe is a digital marketing consultant, data scientist, and developer. He has an experience in SEO, SEM, PBC, and CRO. He regularly speaks at conferences, local meetups, and user groups on SEO fundamentals and technical SEO. He is a, the CEO of G5 Media. He is the creator of TopicalRelevance.com with over 1,000 subscribers. He runs the super secret SEO chat on Skype. He has been an SEO tester for over two years. Please welcome Joe Priest. Welcome, my man, Joe Priest. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Good, good, very good. Joe, like we were talking earlier, we haven't, I mean, we've probably known each other for quite some time, but we've never actually spoke on video or on the phone or anything like that, just through Skype, right? Yeah, never, never before, but uh, it was a uh, pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for asking. Love it, love it. I mean, you've been like supporting the show since day one. I mean, I appreciate that about you. You've been sh you're sharing it with your audience. And speaking of your audience, um, that's just a super secret SEO uh, chat. Did that come before or after Topical Relevance? Uh, it actually started as a support group um, oh. for Topical Relevance. Got um, it. Just a quick way to ask you. But then I think uh, back at that time, there were... Well, one or two big, big groups. I think Ted and Ted and uh, um, Carl had their their massive group, which was like five, six hundred people, and then they moved off of Skype onto uh, IMG, and um, so there was kind of like a gap left for that. So mm -hmm. I kind of opened it up to the general public, and um, it's going from there. I think. Love it, love it. It's an opportunity and. <laughs> Nice, but you're doing some great things, great things there. I mean, you're helping out the community. And speaking of topical relevance, uh, for my last video, you know, when, when, when the guest was talking about um, what has changed from 2010, and it's true, like people were looking at search volumes before on ranking things and just stuffing like keywords with search volumes, but it's all about topical relevance now. Can you like tell the audience about like a little bit about what topical relevance is about? Um, so it's pretty much exactly what you said. Um, it, <laughs> it, it basically it looks at, at your competitors. I think a lot of tools do it. Um, they basically it kind of um, scrapes or goes out, get, grabs the search, scrapes the um, search results, um, then goes and looks at the results and looks at the entities in the in every single one of those pages, and also picks out kind of the most frequently used words, so kind of semantic words, um, and then it kind of filters them in a I would say a little special way. Like it's not just a, a normal filter, but yeah, that's what it does. And then it kind of outputs a nice little schema for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then over time it's grown and, uh, and uh, with the help for, from other people, yeah. Oh yeah, no, um, it's, I've definitely seen it grown. I mean, with, with, with that tool, it's like, and you know what guys, just to let you know, Right now, you can go on there and sign up for free. It's You said there's other tools out there, but not everyone offers it for free, right? I mean, you can go to topicalrelevance.com and register. Register now before it something else happens. <laughs> but, you, you know, I want to... Um, 
I want to take it back a little further because you were talking about NLP categories and, and entities like already over two years ago. I remember uh, looking back at a, an SEO Fight Club episode and like it was episode like number 10 or 11, like really, really early. And you were already talking about this stuff. Like what, what, what like motivates you to even like talk about this uh, and let the SEO world know about like you know, NLP categories and, and you know, the tool itself? What motivated me to do that? Um, I just find it interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so not 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 like my wife doesn't find it interesting. So <laughs> I need someone to talk to, to her about it. Um, uh, kind of, at, I suppose at work, you're kind of left with a lot of um, you. You do the same thing again and again and again at mm -hmm. work when you're doing SEO, so you're optimizing pages, you're looking at backlink profiles and things like that. And not often do you get a chance to kind of del delve deep into the what's going on behind it and why things are, uh, why things work and why things don't work. So I think that led me to testing um, and trying to figure out little bits here and there about what, what actually kind of moves the needle and um, playing around. And then I got involved in programming and developing stuff and, and you know, digging into Google's APIs and seeing what, what I could find from there. And uh, that kind of unsurfaced that basically um, that you've just got to be in, a, be in the right category for, for, for your term. Um, and I think at that time, um, you used to be able to use the AdWords tool to find the category of your site, which I think you can still get that through the Google AdWords API. Um, and you can also work out uh, keywords for categories as well. So these days you can probably do it all through API, um, Google's API, if you've got access. Um, so technically you can grab a whole category or um, the keywords for a category um, for uh, any website, and then you can go on and kind of cluster those into clusters and then you can build from there. Interesting. So you actually were kind of like just reverse engineering Google's API to like kind of get an advantage for, you know, to for, for the SERPs, right? I mean, you kind of use it as like, okay, this is kind of your research tool. To... Yeah, yeah, basically, like why would they, you know, they yeah, give exactly. me that information, you try and try and pick at it and see 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 what you can find. Um, I think one of those things is, as, as I said before, you used to be able to pull it out because, because as I said in, in, the, in that video, is that um, if you ever do AdSense or anything like that, um, they categorize every single website or they used to mm -hmm. categorize every single website. So you can pull out, okay, I want um, ad space on categories in this, you know, uh, motorsports or something like that. You can pull out that category and, and go for websites in there. So they're obviously already doing the categorization, um, you know, 10, 20, you know, a long, mm -hmm. long time. So they've obviously had that technology there. And then when they released the NLP API at, with that in it, um, I thought it was a good chance to actually uh, take a look at it properly more than just using the uh, tools, uh, the AdWords tools. Love it, love it. All right, guys, that gives you a little hint there. If you guys want to try to get above some other SEOs and get a little advantage, take a look at the APIs, study them, and some come up with some patterns and find some tools there. All right, you know what? We need to learn a little bit more about Joe, please. Let's rewind this. So, Joe, how long? I want to know, like, how long have you been doing SEO? Like, why did you get in it? What about it fascinates you? Like, take us way, way back. I'm curious, like, when did you even, like, learn about it? <laughs> so, I, I think from your, um, the intro to this, that you've been doing this for about 15 years? Yep. Um, so, I'm about around the same time. So, I, I designed my first website or coded my first website in about 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and then got dragged into um, the casino um, industry mm -hmm. um, in about 2006. Um, and well, we, we basically tried to start, start up our own casino online. Um, so that didn't really go very well, but it gave us an interest in, uh, gave me an interest in, in uh, basically internet marketing and digital marketing. And it kind of sprung from there. Um, and, you know, carry on a few more years, uh, lived lived a few places around the world and mm -hmm. I basically was an affiliate um, marketer. And so I did a lot of uh, Facebook and CPA um, around that time. So that kind of taught me how to uh, split test and test a lot of landing pages and, and basically a lot of spying and spying of ads and spying of landing pages and kind of figuring out why things work and 
what kind of uh, you know landing page, what kind of ads go together, um, and basically running um, paid ads. And then um, obviously Facebook <laughs> decided they didn't like affiliates anymore, and uh, that kind of killed that for a while. Um, so and also got married, um, and so I had to come. <laughs> well, that's so basically thing. I don't know if you ever. If you've ever done affiliate marketing or CPA marketing, um, a paid one, sometimes like you can be earning a lot of money and then that can just drop um, the next mm -hmm. day. You know, you can get cut for an offer. You can, you know, anything can happen. And so looking for a more kind of stable income, it kind of led to still doing CPA, but building whole websites around it. Mm -hmm. And instead of just relying on pay traffic, um, moving into other areas. So uh, email marketing, um, which is a big one, and um, also into SEO. And then <laughs> this is all, all based around life, life decisions. And, mm -hmm. uh, then we had kids. Mm -hmm. And so that, that <laughs> came into not having enough time to uh, do this. And then that just got into um, even more kind of regular income in um, starting up an agency and um, working for that kind of um, monthly income. So wait, starting. Um, and, uh, uh, did you start your own agency or you started working for an agency? I started my own agency. Oh, nice, from nice. What I learned from um, you know Facebook marketing and basically running um, ads, um, and then that led on to a few years and doing that, and then I got involved. Um, back into the casino company who who by that time had changed into um, a men's fashion company um, so that, that took a left turn yeah. um and then from there you know you just learn like that we were competing with national companies I don't, we're in the uk so companies like marks and spencers john lewis and you know huge huge companies with large budgets behind them um and doing things on a shoestring you kind of learn learn tricks of the trade i suppose you learn how to build huge networks or you learn how to um you know just do this and that that will that will basically push your site above some big big players mm -hmm. um, and i think that leads on today <laughs> today and so okay so you uh, started doing that and you're playing with things but so how did you actually learn it were you like did you follow anyone did you like read up on certain people or like was there websites that you actually just kind of checked out every once in a while and test out uh, how were you um, learning your, your your strategy and your tactics and putting it together? Um, I th probably just a lot of reading, okay. and I do a lot of courses. Um, for I think the last person that um, followed was uh, Robbie Richards, which you had yeah. you had on here. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's done some really really good stuff and mm -hmm. um, his audits and things like that, which is more kind of. Um, I'd say agency based that you can take that whole audit audit and and redo it and you know sell it as a product mm -hmm. i think uh and his you know his whole website has got a lot of lot of good information on there i think another person that kind of inspired me <laughs> i've only ever seen one interview with him which was on the uh, craig campbell's show which mm -hmm. was uh, with peter van de graaf oh, so, he's a yeah. dutch seo um, who's really uh I don't know he, he's just inspiring in, in basically in what you can achieve with SEO I mean once you can once you realize that um, you can shift people's opinions by showing them things on the internet and you can change the way that people think and probably the way that you know uh, well, he, it, at the level he does it yeah. the way that countries think so I think uh, he was brilliant so if you've never seen that that interview yep. with uh, him and uh, Craig Campbell definitely go and watch that yeah, definitely, everyone. If you um, haven't seen that interview, you can see it on Craig Campbell's channel. Um, Peter Van it's Peter Vandergraaff, right? And then it's like, um, check it out. It's it's he's it's probably the only interview he's done, uh, really. Like you're, you're right. Um, okay, so let from there, uh, you, you talked about getting your agency, but you didn't really talk about like how you start building tools. Because I've just realized after doing some research when before our interview, it's like you actually put out a few tools. It's not just topical, topicalrelevance.com. There's a few other tools that are out there that you actually put out. Like, so what what motivates you to build tools, and what are some of those tools, and where are they at now? So I think what motivates me at the moment is working with the guys that I do work with, so Geeky mm -hmm. Tech. Like they basically have a, a, a big system that, um, that I thought I could come in there and um, streamline it um, and automate things. So 
I've built a few, as I said, I've built a few tools. One that is obviously topical relevance, but topical relevance is just the kind of the tip of the iceberg. Um, originally, topical relevance was um, kind of a whole, because you're pulling all of that data, um, you're scraping all of those sites, it's not only the words that you can look at. Um, and this was back at the time that Pop was just coming out, the Cora was just making it. Um, I don't think Surf was around then. Um, but basically, you know, you can count your H tags, you can count all of these tags, and you, I can still do that with topical relevance. Um, it's got more, a bit more involved now that from that information, we can also move on to building out um, content briefs. Mm -hmm. So you can put in a keyword um, and um, grab all the SEO, in, uh, SEO information, um, put that into a nice uh, layout, into a content brief, um, then add in some kind of headings and uh, suggestions. And we're also using GPT-3 for some of that as well. So you combine those two of um, GPT-3 and the SEO information to come up with this kind of comprehensive uh, content brief. So that's been, that's something that I've been building at the moment. Um, and on top of that, as I said before, kind of the way that we do SEO is that we, you know, we concentrate on words and we concentrate on um, categories and trying to get that category, especially on links and things like that, trying to get the categories right or, mm -hmm. you know, the um, relevance right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I think it's quite a big topic now, which is clustering. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of there are a lot of clusters out there. Um, currently, I think um, Keyword Cupid is probably the best one that we we use, but we also have our own in-house version, which um, hopefully, uh, when, when it's all finished, it was basically um, put in your website, put in your um, keyword, and then it will come out with a, a cluster and all the content briefs and hook it up to an API to a writer or a, uh, to that. Thing. So basically, it's one. what everyone dreams of is a one button SEO machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, a few things. so so okay. You you're talking about clustering, and that is like one, one of like one of the hot, uh, hot words right now, buzzwords and, and clustering. For those that don't understand, like keyword clustering or even topic clustering, uh, can you like help define what say like a keyword cluster is, or what it, what it's doing, or what a tool like say you know keyword cubit is doing? Or so, uh, um, the, I think you you spoke to um, is it Mikhail Suski and who. Who, who run Surfer? Yes, yeah, Surfer. I think yeah. he went through it quite quite well. Like he, yeah. he comes up with a, yeah a couple of ways you, um, to cluster. There's one that looks at I think SE ranking and I think Surfer might do it as well. They look at the top results and then they they try and um, see if there's any relationship between the the, the top results for, for different keywords. So if say keyword A has got three results that are the same as keyword B, then they should be matched together. Mm -hmm. um, I think keyword keeper does it in a in a, a different slightly different way and they use a different method. Mm -hmm. Um there's also a method, I think uh Mikhail mentioned DB scan. Um I know uh, Leo uses um uh I can't I can't, I can't speak to him. <laughs> he does uh, RNNs or something. Um but you can also use network graph um you know you yeah. can use graph and network X and things like that to create them as well. Um I think maybe bit too technical yeah I <laughs> but mean, basically I, I, this is all new to me <laughs> like, like i'm trying to listen i have to watch this again like what tools did he just mention uh, but yeah so that's it's it's so okay I mean, I, i'm getting it i'm getting it i mean um but basically but, it should be able to create a whole kind of structure or layout of what you your, what your website should or should look like um so you can say okay that these keywords are in this kind of cluster um you can say okay this cluster is actually we can call it a, like a wordpress category so this is just a category and we'll have these posts about these keywords and then um again with technology these days you can then go out to the certs find all of those um pull back all the data create the content briefs or you can just pull out the headers or and then recreate your own uh text Love it, love it. Okay, so I wanted to go. Okay, let's 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 kind of like get off of relevance and everything like that because there's something else that you did really well here that I want I want you to like kind of share and see how you did it. You know, I want to talk about the super secret SEO chat because you said you first made it a support group, right? It was supposed to be supposed to like a support chat and support group. So like, but you know, building a community is hard. 
it's really really hard like just and I've, you're almost coming over to what 200 people subscribers or 200 at least people in the chat just talking helping each other out by the way i mean what are some tips for you that you can give someone that wants to build a certain community whether it's an seo community or anyone that's watching digital marketing they want to build their own digital marketing community what are some tips that you can give them <laughs> um i would say that you've obviously got to be involved and take or I suppose care, like you can't go into a niche that you don't know anything about. You can't really go into a niche that, that you don't want to spend time in. Like, um, I'm happy to spend hours talking about SEO. Um, and generally I'm at, the, at a computer uh, most of the day. So it's very easy to, to, you know, and that's just my medium. It's like Skype's quite an easy one for me. Um, I'm not sure I could do what you do building a community like this. You've got what over, over a thousand, thousand, 500 subscribers does. no it's a little different though because i don't get that interaction like you do right because you have with, with, with when you have a chat and then you're there to like answer right away which is great too because you're, you're providing yourself as a resource to the community which is valuable so those who are not subscribed or uh in the seo chat group the super secret seo chats you can sign up to it or find the link in topicalrelevance.com. So be sure to check that out, topicalrelevance.com to join the super secret SEO chat. And I know you guys, the audience has heard me talk about it all the time. It's a great group of people. Um, and Joe, I'm curious, like, so with a group like that, how do you, do you moderate everything? Do you actually accept everyone that actually joins? Do you actually like maybe take people out? Like how is your group, like, I mean, like say like a chat like that, do you actually, yeah. Do you actually <laughs> accept everyone that actually tries to join? Um, I don't think you have a choice with Skype, <laughs> but I think okay. it's an open invitation or a closed invitation. Um, I've only had to throw out, I think, one person or two people because they did something that was not cool at all to a friend. Um, I think they, yeah, um, yeah. So they they got asked to leave, um, yeah. and that was that. That's been the only in two two years now. It's been going. That's the only person that's ever been thrown out. I think because most of the people that join come through the tool, um, they're all SEOs. They're not really there to, um, they're either there to learn or to chat or to um, uh, ask questions or for support. So um, I think that's that's the kind of filter. Um, and if you have been invited, then it's probably by someone who knows about the group um, and is kind of um, active in it. Love it, love it. Okay, we're getting a bunch of questions coming in here. Let's go ahead and get, um, ask our first one here by Animal Nerds. In your opinion, what is the difference between LSI and entities? I don't think LSI are a thing. Um, well, they're obviously a thing. <laughs> um, okay, so entities are things. <laughs> um, LSI are probably more um, common words. I always say, if you think of, um, if you ever know the game of uh, Taboo, where basically you're given a card with a word on it and people have got to guess that word, but then, um, sorry, people have got to guess what the word is, but you're not allowed to say the word. So you say words around it. Um, and then from those words around it, you should be able to guess that word. That's kind of what LSI are. Um, entities are things. Yeah, so entities are, are things. Basically you can find them in the database in a huge uh, knowledge graph so um that's yeah basically entities you can find you, you you can find them in google love it great answer there we have another one here by hobby do you use keyword heat map um i don't know what keyword heat map is so the answer to that is no all right um, i will look at it look, at, look <laughs> for it do i use a keyword heat map? yeah i mean i think do you use a keyword? We can come back to that question. So, Hobby, if you want to clarify your question, please clarify it. So, we have one here by Zen. Slack community is a difficult to maintain. How do you keep engagement up, Joe? Um, basically, because I'm there all day, every day, pretty much when I'm working. Um, and if I see, see something interesting, then um, I'll post it. And, and that's kind of it. And also, the people, because obviously, you meet people in groups and then you can take them off. Not take them off but you can move them onto a separate channel um and speak to them and you discuss whatever you, you know um it's just a good way to i suppose start relationships with um like-minded like-minded people 
Love it. Great answers, Joe. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm with here with, with Mike's. He said that was a great way of spelling, um, explaining LSI. Great way. Love that. Okay. So I want to go now into something that you're also like, you know, very good at, which is SEO testing. Uh, you, you've been testing, uh, you're like one of the main testers on SIA. Um, I'm curious, like what are some current like tests that you've ran recently that are um, that you can share or if you're willing to share that have opened up your eyes on certain things in SEO? <laughs> um, I think testing leads in, there's different types of testing. And um, I think I'm in a position to be able to uh, test things in different different ways. So I think the most common ones are the um, kind of the SIA approach and the single variant kind of things that Carl Carl Roof's put out, um, and, and um, also in the IMG community, but they've got a lot of um, uh, single variant tests, um, and that's really just to see um, like small little things. This one that I will bring out in a couple of weeks, I think, is all about the something ridiculous, which is the um, Flesh Kincaid reading score, which is, which shouldn't, should really, it shouldn't be any kind of indication of how well something ranks, because it's just, it's just silly. Um, uh, but uh, just early kind of results are showing that actually longer sentences with longer words could actually be a small factor in there. Um, how that works, I'm not not quite sure and I don't think it's the I don't think it's the flesh Kincaid score I think there's something else going on there um, uh, so that's one one thing I've been working on um, I think yeah as I said the testing leads into different things so one of my favorite tests I did um, was seeing how much kind of spun content you can get indexed um, ah, so um, I'm quite big into uh, mass pages and infinite sites so with about, uh, I'll say about six lines of code, you can build an infinite site. Um, so basically, um, it's a site that generates pages when everyone, anyone lands on the URL. Um, so you can basically take a, or you used to be able to take a like 200 word um, bit of text, spin it, um, let Google call it, and let it go for 70 to 200,000 pages. And it will index most of that, or at least it will show up in webmasters. Um, what? So Wait, so um, you said just you can do that with just a few lines of code of um and and so what kind of I'm curious like how the process of getting that created. I mean, I'm just just for <laughs> educational purposes. Overflow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> educational purposes only. Um but you know, it's it's basically working with HD access and um uh PHP. Oh. Um, so, you know, anytime anyone turns into a URL, you're just showing it another version. You, you, you only got the one page, which spins itself every time a visitor comes in. So um, when something hits a URL, you stick it, um, it comes into HD Access. HD Access redirects it to that page, but keeps the URL, um, and then spins it, so it's a brand new page. Um, and then obviously you can put a, 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 a link in there to another page, which is just generated, so then it will crawl that as well, and then it will just keep going in circles. Not circles, but it will just keep going infinite. Um, uh -huh. yeah. Which is, yeah, it's, it's not wrong. <laughs> Interesting stuff there. This is to play with. Okay. Okay. So we have another question here. Have you started looking at the new uh, generative API from Google over GP3, the GPT3? I don't think the generative API, I didn't realize it was open to the public. Is it? Oh, I'm not sure. With mics, is it oh, is it open to the public? Didn't know though. I wouldn't have thought it would be. All right. Okay, guys, go ahead and keep asking your questions. If you have any, I have my before I ask my last question, but I do have um, something here where let's see, like, is the, you're talking about some of your projects that were upcoming. I mean, I know you're telling me something cool that's happening with topical relevance. You're before us. I don't know if you want to announce it here or anything like that, but is this, is there anything right now that's happening with topical relevance.com <laughs> that you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there is an upgraded version. Um, I brought it out, um, yesterday actually, uh, I oh, yeah. snuck in a, a link at the top. Um, oh. I have not seen uh, it. I haven't. I yeah. I have not. A. I have not um, advertised it or anything, or marketed it or anything like that. Um, but it's there. It's it does work. Um, again, I'll, this is one of the things that I'm 
more a back-end person. I'm, I'm not a developer. So, <laughs> so I, I brief is, um, yeah, I think, but it works, it works well. And um, yeah, check oh. it out. Oh, yeah. love it, love it. I mean, uh, Joe, I, I don't know if you know this, but like a topical relevance has been a permanent tool in my in my strategy. Uh, for any of the clients I work with for my regular nine to five SEO job, I'm using topical relevance like no, no tomorrow. And I'm, I can't wait to actually check out this <laughs> after our show, click on that link and see what's on, what's on the new topical relevance.com. Okay, guys. All right, I didn't see any other questions come in here. Uh, I mean, Joe, is there any last tips? Um, I mean, okay, first, first, uh, if someone wants to get into the SEO industry, what would be that one tip advice that you would give this person trying to get into the SEO industry? <laughs> it's creating competition for ourselves. Don't do it. Um, I think the same as everyone else is start up your own website and play around. There's no getting, you know, you just got to get on with it. Um, yeah, just get on with it. And people say start one website, I'd probably go to start as many as you can, as quickly as you possibly could, and just test. Oh, that's, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, people just say one, but hey, just do a lot more. Okay, um, is there any last tips for the audience? Uh, anything that you want to share to make this episode complete for you? Um, well, I just want to say again, thank you very much for, for having me on. And uh, I've, again, I'm a big fan because I know how hard it is to get up and, and actually create something. And I think you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. So if anyone wants to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Um, yeah, either in the Skype group or, you know, I think in topicalrelevance.com and also at geekytech.co.uk. Got it. All right. So we have here. Um, so that concludes up this, this here. Just we got one more uh, comment here. Just get on with it and test. Thanks for the tip. Succinct and informative. There you go, Joe. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Joe. So can you kind of hold on to uh, hold on for one second while I sign off here? Sure. All right. All right, guys. That concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Be sure to like, subscribe. And hit that notification bell to get notified when we go live. We have a bunch of new um, guests coming in. We have Dwayne Forrester coming up, Nathan Gotch, Alita Solis, and so much more. So be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe. That way, let's. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo! Yeah, yeah.